I've entitled this message, Revival Fire Fall. Yeah. Revival Fire Fall. Hallelujah. So we can't be asleep for that one. Amen. Stir ourselves up. Isaiah 54 verse 2 goes on to say, Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Spare not, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you will spread abroad to the right hand and to the left and your offspring will possess the nations and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Amen. Enlarge the place of your tent. It's time for enlargement. Amen. The word lengthen is to go further. We're going further tonight. We're going somewhere tonight. Amen. God is in the house and He's leading us. Hallelujah. Fire carriers of the presence of God. I just love it. Amen. Fire carriers in the marketplace, wherever we go, carrying the fire, the presence of God. In Philippians 4.13, it goes on to say, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. And I've got here, uh, I can do all seasons of life through Christ who strengthens me. So whatever season you find yourself in, declare that tonight, that I can do that season. I can do that season because Christ strengthens me. Amen. A lot of times when we're going through a winter season, we just want to shy away. We don't want to go through the winter season because that's a time when we're hurting, we're aching, we're crying, we're paining. But I can do all seasons of life through Christ because He strengthens me. Hallelujah. He strengthens me. Corey, the Lord strengthened you. Even though there's a lot of battles going around about you and it's like I just see things, upheavals around about you. The Lord says, son, I'm strengthening you tonight. Strengthening you tonight. I'm giving you hinds feet for the high places. Come up higher. Let go of those things. Come up higher. Hallelujah. My will and purpose isn't down there. It's up further. Hallelujah. So take your eyes off, off what isn't of me and put your eyes upon me. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory God. Hallelujah. Psalm 18.33 says, He makes my feet like hinds feet, able to stand firmly or make progress on the dangerous heights of testing and trouble. He sets me securely upon my high places. And I love it. He makes my feet like hinds feet, able to stand firmly or make progress on my dangerous places of testing and trouble. Amen. Makes my feet so we're able to go higher. Because God has given us hinds feet for the high places. Amen. He hasn't called us to be chicken in the pen. (laughs) He's called us to come up higher. Come up higher tonight. Amen. That's right. We've got to soar higher. Come up higher. Glory to the Lord. Yes, that's right. That eagle's not meant to be in that chicken pen. Amen. I have a vision for this nation. I have a dream for this land. Amen. Hallelujah. I love the the, uh, army in Joel. In Joel chapter 2 verse 4, it goes on to say, this is out of the ESV, their appearance is like the appearance of horses and like war horses they run. As with the rumbling of chariots, they leap on the tops of the mountain like the crackling of a flame of fire devouring the stubble, like a powerful army drawn up for battle. Before them, peoples are in anguish. All faces grow pale like warriors. They charge like soldiers. They scale the wall. They march each on his way. They do not swerve from their path. They do not jottle one another. Each marches in his path. They burst through the weapons and are not halted. They leap upon the city. They run upon the walls. They climb up into the houses. They enter through the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens trembles. The sun and the moon are darkened and the stars withdraw their shining. The Lord utters His voice before His army for His camp is exceedingly great. He who executes His word is powerful. This is a powerful army. Hallelujah. And I love it. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, like war horses they run. Wow. As with the rumbling of chariots, they leap on the tops of the mountain, like the crackling of a flame of fire devouring the stubble. This is a powerful army of God. Amen. Hallelujah. War horses. Wow. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Can you hear the, th- the, the thundering of the war horses in the earth? Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. 
Oh, rumbling in the earth, the earth shaking, amen. With their, with their, with their hooves, their footprints, amen. It's like devil, don't stand in our way because we're coming through and nothing you do is going to stop us. Hallelujah, a rumbling of the chariots. Glory, glory, glory. This is a dreaded army. This is a formidable army. The enemy dreads this army of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. <clears throat> Locusts and armies have a similar movement and sound. Both are used by Joel to capture the presence of the ultimate powerful army. This army cannot be thwarted from its assigned course as every member of the unifying ranks advances. This is an unstoppable army of God. Hallelujah. They are unstoppable. Don't you notice many times the enemies wanted to stop you, wanted to shut you down, wanted to knock you out. Hallelujah. You were knocked down, but not knocked out. You got up again. Amen. To sing his praises once again. Glory, glory, glory. I love that war horses. Wow. Rumbling of chariots. Hallelujah. We are making a thunderous noise in the earth. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I just love it. Glory. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory. This is a powerful army of God. Amen. A force to be reckoned with. A force to be reckoned with. Hallelujah. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. In Leviticus 6.12, it goes on to say, And the fire upon the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be allowed to go out. The priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offerings in, in order upon it. And he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall be burning continually upon the altar. It shall not go out. It's up to us to keep the fire burning. I've talked about that so many times. The fire of God, the zeal of God has consumed me. It burneth in my soul. A mighty force that cannot be stopped. A fire that cannot be quenched. Hallelujah. We're going to keep that fire stoked up. Amen. Don't let discouragement get in the way, but keep that fire stoked up. Be on fire. Be ablaze with the glory of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Don't have someone else to come and stoke your fire. Stoke it up yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get up there in the morning and stop moaning and groaning and begin to stoke the fire up. Make a difference. Hallelujah. Charles Wesley sang, Oh, that in me the sacred fire might now begin to glow. Burn up the dross of base desire and make the mountains flow. And Dr. Hash cried, and he said, breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine, until the earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Hallelujah. And I love what Paul Wilbur um, <clears throat> sings about in his lyrics, burn in me, let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. Your words like fire burning in my soul, burn up the dross, bring forth the gold. You feel like a fire shut in my bones, consume me Lord. Lord, make me your all. Burn in me. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. Hallelujah. Make that your prayer. Let the fire of the Holy One burn in me. In Romans 12, 11, never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavour. Be a glow and burning with the Spirit serving the Lord. Hallelujah. When I used to go to the women's aglow, I used to think that, be aglow and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Someone's got to carry the fire. Someone's got to be a carrier of the fire of God. Yeah. Take it into the workplace. Take it in the home. Take it in the marketplace. Be on fire. Be ablaze with the glory of God. Glory, Hallelujah. A few weeks ago when I gave um, Ella a word, um, it was one Sunday morning in church and I seen around her heart was fire, wow. was fire around her heart. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. Amen. You know, you and I have to make a difference. Yes. Have to make a difference. Stop waiting for somebody else to make a difference. You make a difference wherever you are. Yes. You know, E.M. Bounds dug the well of prayer. He dug that well of prayer. He would have received opposition and challenges, but he dug the well of prayer. 
Lester Sumrall dug the well of deliverance. Pastor Ainsley dug the well of prayer. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. And he didn't know I wrote that on my piece of paper. I kept it a secret. I can keep a secret. He dug the well of prayer. Amen. And it's still going. And others are digging the well of prayer. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, he's dug the well of prayer. It hasn't been without opposition. It hasn't been without a challenge. <clears throat> and I think about it's like when Isaac redug the wells that his father had dug and he encountered opposition. Amen. The Philistines, they came and they stopped up the well but he still kept digging. He reopened the wells and we've got to keep on digging that prayer well. Amen. Keep digging, keep digging. Amen. You might feel you're digging all on your own, but it's going to affect the generations to come. Hallelujah. Fire carriers, they left something behind for generations to come. For generations to come. See, what you are doing is not going to only affect your life, but it's to affect the generations to come. Glory, glory, glory. And Charles Finney dug the well of revival. Hallelujah. I just want to um, read a few things here about Charles Finney. It's um, out of Tommy Tenney's book and it's God's favourite house. Uh, Finney was marked by city transforming revivals. Finney, a man who burnt with the passion of deep prayer and an intimate relationship with God. It is said that when Finney walked through the knitting mills in the late 1800s, the presence of God was so strong that workers began to fall to their knees in repentance. Even before he opened his mouth, ultimately the entire city and region were affected because of the presence of God he carried with him. It was as if he carried a light with him that suddenly allowed men to view themselves and God from a right perspective. When the presence came near, men knew that they were dirty and that God was holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Tommy Tenney talks about that. uh, He visited the the, uh, mills that were abandoned a long time ago that Charles Finney went to. And the people who work there and experience the power of God are gone now. Even so, the potential of God seems still to linger in the silence of these buildings. He said, I leaned against the wall of one of the mills and just wept as I prayed. God, I want to be a person who props open the windows of heaven so much that people will have an encounter with you just by being around me. Hallelujah. Isn't that the cry of each one of our hearts? That's the cry of every one of our hearts. Amen. Glory to God. That people will have an encounter with the living God just by being around us. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I thought that was so powerful. That was just so awesome. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. Taking that revival fire, taking that fire out there, the presence of evangelism, the presence of God. Amen. Taking it out into the marketplace. In Jeremiah 1, 9, uh, it goes on to say, Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I put my words in your mouth. This is the Lord with Jeremiah. God put his words in his mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jeremiah 23, 29 goes on to say, is not my word like fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test, says the Lord. Is not my word like fire. Hallelujah. I love it. Fire symbolises God's purifying presence, which burns away the undesirable element of our lives. When the Lord spoke to Jeremiah, His Word was like fire. There was was something burning about it. Some of us will get it on the way home. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 5.14. And, and, and the Lord's speaking to Jeremiah and he says, I will make my words fire in your mouth, Jeremiah. And these people would and it will devour them. Jeremiah's words would be powerful. God was bringing Jeremiah to a new level, a new level. Hallelujah. That his words were going to be like fire. Amen. That would consume all the hay, the wood, the stubble in people's lives. 
Amen. Revival, fire fall. And isn't that with each one of us? We want our words to be effective. We want our words to hit the mark in people's lives. Like Samuel, not one of his words fell to the ground. And we want to be men and women that make a difference out there in the supermarket. The people look at us, they see us coming and, uh, and we have favour in the marketplace. Favour. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I went to buy a few things that... Coles the other day, and, um, and this lady said, you can go before me. Oh, thank you very much. I was really blessed with that. And then there was a lady before her, and she says, you can go before me too. <laughs> wow. That was like a double blessing. I thought, wow, you don't have that happening every day. Hallelujah. Wherever we go, amen, we should see God's favour. We should see His blessings, amen. We should, we should know there's a difference. There's something different when I'm going to come into the shops. There's something different when I stand at the checkout. They're going to send something different from me. They're going to know I'm not tarred with the same brush the world is. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to usher in the kingdom of God. We want to be carriers of fire, glory fire, wherever we go, into the workplace, into those people's places. We want to make a difference. Amen. <clears throat> Think about Charles Finney. Hallelujah. The presence of God. Amen. God is no respecter of persons. He was a man of prayer. Hallelujah. We can change lives wherever we go. We can see chains falling. We can see those demoniacs being free as we walk past our shadows of the Holy Spirit and them to be set free. Wherever we go. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Sean, I was thinking about Psalm 40 for you tonight. And it was... Um, <clears throat> He lifted my feet out of the miry clay and he put my feet upon a rock to stay. And he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise and worship unto him. And, and Sean, I just see the Lord restoring you, strengthening you, healing you emotionally. And it's like guilt and, and just all the blame and all the shame. It's just like the heaviness has been released from you tonight. I just see the Lord is going to give you a peaceful night's sleep. And it's like you're going to find rest in a God, a, a loving God, a God that that's a comforter, a healer, a restorer. And you are going to find that God is going to do awesome things in your life. And I just see like even spiritually, it's like you've been stunted. Uh, God is going to set you free and you're going to have such a heart for broken people. I just see love and compassion flowing out of you. You're going to have a revelation and understanding of the love of God. God is going to download the love of God into your heart and He's going to bring such deep healing into those areas that have been so broken for so long and so much pain on the inside. I just see the Lord releasing you and it's like healing broken areas in your life, restoring you and lifting you up and putting your feet upon that rock to stay. And it's like you're going to praise and worship God. You're going to have a revelation of Abba Daddy, the love of God that you've never experienced, that you've never had from a father. You're just going to know God's love in a new way, in a real way. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. God is just an amazing. In Leviticus chapter 9, verse 22, it goes on to say, Then Aaron lifted his hand towards the people and blessed them. And having sacrificed the sin offering, the burnt offering and the fellowship offering, he stepped down. Moses and Aaron then went into the tent of meeting. When they came out, they blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the fat portions on the altar. And when all the people saw it, they shouted for joy and fell face down. Lord, we want our lives to be changed and transformed forever, Lord God. Let the fire of your presence begin to fall on every one of us tonight, Lord God. Lift your hands up to the Lord tonight. Let the Holy Spirit touch you tonight on Zoom and in this place. Holy Spirit, that you would come and you would just bring change tonight. That you would burn away all the dross, all the, all the hay, all the stubble tonight, Holy Spirit. That you would come and consume that tonight. Every unholy root, let the fire of God come and conserve it in the name of Jesus tonight. Purify your church, purify your people. Let the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit come 
and begin to cleanse our hearts tonight. Deep cleansing, deep cleaning tonight, Lord God, that all that guilt, Lord God, and all the shame would be lifted off tonight. Wash it away with your precious blood, Lord God. All that contamination tonight, Lord God, all that defilement, all that bitterness, Lord God, will be uprooted tonight in the name of Jesus. Set it on fire, Lord God. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit begin to come and begin to burn in your people, Lord God. Let the freshness of your Holy Spirit begin to fall, Lord God. Lord, we want more, Lord God. Baptise us in the Holy Spirit tonight, afresh, Lord God. Let it fall afresh tonight, Lord God. Touch us, Lord. We want to be aflame with the power and the presence of God, Lord, tonight. We want to be changed, Lord God. Touch us in a new way, Lord God, in a new way, Lord God, that you will move mightily, mightily, mightily. Hallelujah.